So I'm going to open Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic asks me the first time I open it to create a catalog. The Creative Cloud automatically does this in the background. So the catalog, it's my library. It's where I'm going to store all my photos. So I'm going to create a new catalog. Now, once I've created this, every time I open Lightroom, it'll go back and it will just open this catalog. Uh, so I only have to do this once. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to call it test catalog. And that's going to be on the desktop. And I'm actually going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call that Lightroom folder. So that'll be on my desktop. Click Create. Now Lightroom is opening. Now you'll recall from earlier sessions that this has a different look. This has three separate panels, and I can, if I want, I can eliminate these panels on the side so that I have a larger screen. I can I can have them fly in and fly out by using these little handles on the side. And the Lightroom Creative Cloud, there was a button up at the top that said Add Photos. With the Lightroom Classic, there's there's an Import button. Lightroom Classic is different from Creative Cloud in its use of what's referred to as modules. All right, these are little like plugin sites that that change the the way uh, the software works. The library module is where where you will find all of your images. That's where you're going to look for all the photos that you imported. The develop module is similar to, but not quite the same as the edit module in Creative Cloud. We'll go through the tools in a second. There's a map module that will locate where your photographs were taken if you were using a digital camera or a phone and you have your GPS turned down. There's a book module that will allow you to actually construct and publish a book of photographs. The slideshow module does pretty much what you would expect it to do. You can create a slideshow, you can add music to it, uh, then you can export it, save it on a flash drive, share it with friends. The print module, which will allow you to kind of envision what your photographs are going to look like when you print them and give you some options for printing multiple copies on a single sheet of paper, etc. And then the web module that allows you to upload your photographs to a website. It'll actually create a web page and, and upload it to a uh, you know, commercial website if you have one and you have your... your uh, connection set up ahead of time. Um, I've used it. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. What I'm not sure about this is whether or not this uses Flash in order to build the website because Flash is going to be discontinued in about six weeks time. Forever. So we are going to be concerned with the library module and the develop module and possibly the print module. But for us right now, that's it. So I go back to the library module, and I have no photos, so I need to import photos so I can work on them. And I'm going to click the import button. Okay. And I'm going to find my photos. Now I'm going to cancel this out for a second. I am going to... I have a, a, a camera card here. 
uh, I'm going to insert this camera card and it should automatically trigger the import module when I insert this into my reader. So I'm going to insert the card and as soon as the computer recognizes that there is a card from a camera it automatically goes to the import modules. Now these are all of the photographs that are on my card. I don't know. Let's see. So these are all of the photos. I can import all of these photos. I can import a few of these photos. And I can, uh, if there's some I don't want to import, I can uncheck them and they will not import. If I uncheck everything, I can select a few if I only want to import a certain few. If there's a string of photos I want to import, I can click in the body of the image, scroll down, find the last photo I want to import, hold the shift key, it highlights them all, I hit the checkbox and it will check them all. Or I can just click check all and everything will be imported. So in the import module, it's showing me on the left hand side where the images are coming from. They're coming from the untitled one camera card. They are being copied off of the card onto my hard drive. And they're going into my internal SSD, my, my hard drive. Now, I don't know necessarily where. They're going to go to the pictures folder. If I, if I don't corral these or put them in a folder, then I'm just going to have, if I imported 45 photos, there's, now there's 45 photos in my pictures folder. If I come back and I add another 200 now, I've got 245 just pictures just all over my, my pictures folder. So I like to catalog them a little bit better than that. So I'm going to click on the hard drive, choose other destination. And what I'm going to do for today, I'm going to choose the desktop and I am going to choose that folder that I just made called Lightroom folder. So all my photographs will be copied into this Lightroom folder. Click choose. And in the lower right hand corner, I'll click the import button and it will begin importing the images. Now when that happens, I want you then to turn your attention up here to the upper left hand corner and you'll see the import progress. When I click import, right now it says copy and import photos and it's showing you that it is importing the images up here and you see the images begin to appear in my Lightroom catalog. Depending on how many photographs, the size of your images, and the speed of your reader, it could take anywhere from, you know, two minutes to many, 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 many more minutes than that. And it looks like everything is actually imported. Lightroom has ejected the card. And it's building preview. So now I have all my fold my photos in my Lightroom catalog. And I'm going to move this down, open this Lightroom folder. And you can see all my photographs have been copied off of my camera card to my Lightroom folder. So at this point, I can choose a photo. Let's see. Let me come down here. Let 
Okay, I've chosen a photo, and now I'm going to edit it in the develop module. In the Creative Cloud, it's referred to as, as the edit module, and, and everything's down the side of the right-hand bar. In the classic version, the, the modules are listed across the top of the bar, still down the right-hand side. So my edit module at the top is the histogram. It shows me essentially the weight of the image in terms of the overall um, lightness and darkness. Now this is kind of a dark photo, and so it's showing me that there, there's a lot of image space that is in the in the like black to dark gray to medium gray area and there's not a lot of information in the in the upper ranges the the highlights and the and the uh, mid-range and the highlight areas and you can see the really there's only a little bit of of highlight in this photo most of it's medium to dark looking at it so if i change my exposure you'll see the histogram move and I could move it over and I can balance it. Now the photograph's a little bit lighter, but I've got this huge spike in the highlights and you can see the highlights are really washed out. So I can bring the highlights down some. I could bring the white values down a little bit, maybe enrich the blacks a little. I can I, so I can begin to move this around and, and do my edits. The same edits, exact same edits as I have in the uh, Creative Cloud version. Now, one of the I'm going to turn this down so we can see a little bit easier. The um, Hue, saturation, and luminance. This is where you can make certain colors brighter. I can I can make them really saturated or unsaturated. I can make that redder or make it yellower. I can change the luminance, make it darker, make it lighter. If I change my image from color to a black and white, make it a monochrome image, then the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders are now black and white sliders. And this is the, the discussion we had last week about, uh, the week before, about the colored filters. If I put a red filter in front of my lens the yellows are going to get darker the greens are going to appear darker if i have a yellow filter then the reds get darker so i can actually move areas of this of this image up and down in terms of lightness and darkness now this won't have any impact on our our film photos because they come in as, as a monochrome. They come in as um, devoid of, of any color information because they're not a digital color image, duh, right? Um, so these sliders don't have any effect, but I know you'll be working with images other than film. And then I can do, do, do what am I looking for here? Close that my effects. I can do my little corner vignette. I can add a film grain. Come back up here. Maybe play with the image a little bit more. Okay. So that's that's the editing process in this version of Lightroom, in the classic version. The last thing I need to do when I'm done with this, I want to share this photo with people. I need to export it out of Lightroom. I go back to the library module, and I can choose one photo. I can choose multiple photographs, and I will go to the export button. 
and I will choose where to export it to the desktop. I can put it in a full subfolder. It will Lightroom will create a folder and drop the images in if I choose. I can create the custom text. If I don't want to rename it, I will just uncheck rename. Image format, JPEG, Photoshop document, TIFF file, PNG, digital negative. I'm just going to leave it as a JPEG. If I want to put it up on my Facebook page, because I'm an old person, then I would probably limit my file size to about 3 megabytes. But I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just saving it to my desktop. I'm pretty okay with everything. And so now I'm going to click export. You will see up here in the left hand corner it's showing it's exporting one file. All done. So I'm going to close Lightroom. And there is my image on my desktop. So that's that's a, a quick and dirty tutorial for Lightroom Classic as opposed to Lightroom Creative Cloud.